Between July 2020 and April 2021, VHZC announced a trilogy of games through the Atari Age forums, featuring a sort of mascot of his, Night Guy. He announced Night Guy and Low Res World, Castle Days, first, a sort of screen-by-screen, side-view platformer game. Then he announced Night Guy on board, 30 Squares of Fate, which was meant to be a unique board game slash minigame collection. He announced it in December of that same year. Finally, in April 2021, he announced Night Guy, The Quest for Something, which is an overhead Zelda-style adventure game featuring the armor-clad protagonist. This built up quite a bit of excitement as each game included a work-in-progress demo that could be played via emulator or flashcard, and they were amazingly stylistic and fun to play. And while we're still waiting for Quest for Something and 30 Squares of Fate, at 2021's PRGE, Night Guy and Low Res World, Castle Days, was released for the first time on cartridge, and it was available for purchase on the Atari Age store on New Year's Day of 2022 for the rest of the world. You can still find it on Atari Age to this day, but is it worth your hard-earned money to add to your 7800 collection? Well, let's find out. The very first thing you'll notice as you turn the game on is that it's very stylized. While Night Guy only has two or so frames of walking animation, it looks very good in action. Most enemies and obstacles are similar, but again, everything looks really good. The backgrounds are simplistic, but far from looking bad. Most screens have green walls and floors, or blue depending on your 7800. Remember, the console is just weird like that. This keeps the castle looking consistent between screens, but somehow manages not to be overdone. The shade of blue or green he used is very unique for the 7800, and really allows the game to stand out in its color. The backgrounds are mostly black, but the etchings and markings on the walls sort of convey an aged and neglected feel to the castle. A small detail to be sure, but one that helps with the feel and style nonetheless. Our hero and enemies mostly have large heads. Heads as large as their bodies, actually. But it works in creating a charming and expressive look to the sprites, even if some of them are mostly static. You start the game by avoiding obstacles until you eventually run into your sword and engage the first boss. But even after acquiring the sword, you'll find that avoidance is usually the best course of action. Enemies are in short supply as the evil dragon employs mostly traps to hinder your progress, and they can drain your life quickly. But once you master a screen, you shouldn't have much issue in navigating it from there on. Speaking of the evil dragon, the story is minimal but serviceable. You start the game by picking a cat or dog, and then immediately receive a message that the animal of your choice has been kidnapped by a dragon, and you must save them in under an hour if you ever want to see your pet again. I wonder if the Atari 7800 platformer Scrapyard Dog influenced this story at all. It seems familiar if you've ever played that one. But that's all the story that you'll be given before you enter the castle and get ready to do whatever it takes to save your puppy or kitty cat. Playing the game couldn't be simpler. You can play the game with a 7800 2-button controller or an Atari 2600 1-button controller. You only need one button to jump. You use your sword, once you find it, by running into enemies, and it does the job for you. You'll also occasionally have to move the joystick up or down in order to interact with other objects in the environment. But everything is easy to learn, and I think most people will pick up the game in no time. So the game gives you an hour to find your pet, and you also must escape the castle within that same hour. And you'll be using up a lot of that time in your first successful run, but it won't be long before you find yourself clearing the castle in 25 minutes or less. You would think replayability would be short in this title, as there isn't any increased difficulty settings and no sort of new game plus or anything like that. But everything is programmed so tightly that it's a joy to return to every so often. VHZC uses enough different enemies that you won't find yourself fighting the same one over and over again. This game really is a joy to get through, and if it wasn't so much fun, I'd say it's too short. But what's here is so well done, I think most people won't mind coming back and replaying from time to time. The only real downside is the minimalistic sound. There really is no music outside of a jingle that plays for your successes, and a tune that plays if you get a game over. Outside of that, you'll get the odd sound effect, but some of them are really grating on the ears. 
and that honestly makes me happy that he used the sound so sparingly. I do think it would have been nice to have some background music, but without using an advanced audio chip on the cartridge that would have likely increased the cost, I don't think the music would have been all that good. In contrast, the boss battles are definitely the highlight of the game for me, and I enjoyed fighting almost all of them. A few of my favorites are the Snail, the Black Knight, the Evil Dragon at the end of the castle. I do think he could have employed more basic enemies alongside the traps and obstacles. It probably would have added to the challenge. It also would have helped some of the rooms that feel a bit sparse. Even with those nitpicks, I think BHZC definitely did something worth playing here. And the sparseness of some of the rooms is something that he's definitely improved upon in his later games. The tight gameplay, fantastic boss battles, and simplistic stylized graphics make this one a joy to play through every now and then, and is a great game to show off to friends who enjoy retro games or discovering new stuff to play on older consoles. And there really isn't enough of that on the 7800 as it is. Unfortunately, it's a pretty short experience. Once you save your pet and find all four secrets, the only reason to keep playing is to improve your time. And for some people, that just won't be enough to keep returning. But for me, the game is fun enough to play that I don't mind taking it off the shelf every now and then and giving it a run-through. The sound is another sore spot in the game. Most of what he has here is pretty good, but he used it a bit too sparingly in most places. And in other places, he uses grating sound effects that definitely aren't par for the course with the rest of the game. Vinny over at Atari7800forever.com gave Night Guy and Low Res World Castle Days a 4.5 out of 5. He said that it follows the Atari mantra of easy to play and difficult to master. He also praised the use of color, and I would agree that the very unique shades of blue and green really work to the game's advantage. The only thing he seemed to ding the game for is the sound. There are also two user scores over on the Atari Age store, where you can pick the game up for $40 for cartridge only, or you can add an additional $15 to that and pick it up with a box and manual. Both users on the Atari Age store page gave the game a perfect score of 5 out of 5. In that vein, I would also recommend this game to fans of the Atari 7800 who have been waiting for an adventure game like this. It's very welcome on a console that doesn't have much in the genre to be proud of. That's why I'm going to give this game 4 Pro-Line controllers out of 5. The pros are the excellent stylized graphics, the excellent boss battles, the great use of colors, and overall, simple controls and tight, excellent gameplay. The cons would have to be the sparse sound that can be grating in places, and the game being very short for people who master it. But outside of that, this game is an easy recommendation on the Atari 7800. Do you own Night Guy and Low Res World Castle Days? What do you think of it? If you don't own it, will you be picking it up in the future? Also, are you excited for the other two Night Guy games? 30 Squares of Fate and Quest for Something? I myself can't wait to get the 30 Squares of Fate. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. This has been John, the 7800 Pro System Gamer, and I thank you for watching the first 7800 Pro Gamer Review.